You know, yeah. I mean, that epitomizes um, what the club is all about. Like, those lads just got an absolute and utter love of the game, the same as we had, and you just build that legacy on. Pat Downey showed us that you don't need a trophy cabinet laden with silverware to be considered a junior rugby legend. But I couldn't help but be a little bit envious of today's guest when he said he was unsure exactly how many <laughs> leagues and cups he'd won playing for Greystones. Barry Kyo, welcome to Throwing Stones. How are you? Ah, Jeremy, you're a gentleman. Uh, what an intro. Um... I actually genuinely don't, but I don't, uh, I, I actually don't ponder on it because to be honest with you, I just you had a roller, I <laughs> know, uh, I just had a roller coaster. It was, you know, it was a period in my life where, um, whether it be playing with some sublime talent, and I actually wrote a few names down because like, it's like a role of honour. Um, and I was lucky enough, Jeremy, to kind of cross probably two generations of talent and um, you know it was probably the the kind of older generation and when I say that I, I mean it with the utmost respect the likes of John Rush the likes of you know Paul Lennon who actually played through about 27 decades and um, we're still not sure if he's retired or he's still talking about it. I, I still think he he definitely brings the boots and um, on the proviso that you know someone on the first will give him a give him a run out at some stage, but like Pablo was there from uh, day memorial, but like you're talking about like Willie Byrne, Dwayne Kelly, Mark Simmons, Cameron McKeever, Barry O'Sullivan came in, Colin McGuckian, Barry McNulty, two 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 as he was renowned for years. Uh, pissing off um, his opposition number in the air. And then we had the likes of Garrett Stingemore come along. Then the younger crew came, the likes of the two Dooler brothers who we couldn't figure out for years because all we did was beat each other up, not alone the opposition. Um, and then on the back line, like Simon Marr, DJ Dars, Lloyd Murphy. And uh, look, that's only to, to name but a few, but it was just, I mean, when I was playing junior rugby, uh, particularly in the noughties. I mean, like first and foremost, we'd have nine teams talking out. You know, it was just, I mean, the crack in actually reading the, the board to find out what team you were on was more fun than actually playing the game. The slagging in the dressing room, just the overall banter was just amazing. The atmosphere was fantastic. And it was a real time where, you know, the first were flying, you know, um, and, and the club was just, you know, it was at a stage which was, you know, uh, I don't think we've reached since, but I think we're actually, you know, the momentum is actually growing and we're going back to that stage. And You've been very generous there, Barry, talking about um, the, uh, the, the various cogs in the wheel. Love the beer, by the way. Um, you've been very generous Thanks, talking about... <laughs> Uh, the various cogs in the wheel that uh, helped make up the junior section. Um, but I'm excited to talk to you today. I think in this podcast now, I've been very fortunate to have, you know, ladies captain, men's captain. We've had Irish internationals, South African internationals, Lions, Heineken Cup winners. Yeah. Today we get to talk to the 1996 J5's <laughs> most improved back of the year. <laughs> Look Jeez, what I've been. One of the few, few <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bottom. Yeah. Role of honor. Yeah. Um, yeah, quite an interesting, uh, interesting time I see here. There are uh, yeah, nine teams, under 19s player of the year was set was Cavey. So that shows just how long ago that was. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, that was that was Cavey. that was that was a mistake. There must be a typo there. There's no yeah. way Cavey ever got any accolade. Uh, most improved forward was Paul Lennon that year. Um 
interesting. Yeah, he's probably uh, he's probably you know, around forty back then. Was that <laughs> back yeah. in the eighties? Was it? Um, J six player of the year, uh, Mark Finnerty. So um, yeah, Finno. I'm sure Finno may be uh, watching this episode, but he's probably talking over it the entire time. I was so just about to say to himself. he was actually given that award to try and silence, give him a bit of silence, <laughs> give us all a bit of silence for a few minutes. Um, serious club program though. Have a look at that, John O'Byrne yeah. laying down the law. I think that's Liam Murphy too, but uh, yeah, don't get much better than yeah. that. Anyway, yeah. we shall move on. Um, you first got started playing rugby as a, as, a, as a very young man um, down in the minis. Tell me a little bit about that and kind of the uh, the various characters uh, yeah, that were involved was, in. Yeah, well, quite, look, back in the day, smaller town, you know, you, you played you played soccer down in Darcy's Field and got frozen from the wind and whipped off to sea. You got, you were down in Aero playing a bit of gar and then you were playing rugby. And, and like that was Phil Mooney and the crew. And again, just the memories. Like, I mean... You know, an awful lot of the lads that came through and played at all levels. And I mean, like, look, uh, I'd say I played at, I, I think, every on every team, even made the first twice, both times with playing with the J1s. And God forbid I say it, there's about 27 injuries and they had to put us on. Um, but um, like all of those lads that I played with the whole way up, like all played, whether whether it was at, you know, they made it on 20s or 19s teams or whatever, played senior or played up at J1, J2 for a period of time. But without fail, all of them, you know, had that social element or a number of years. And it wasn't at a stage where they, they were at the end of their career. A lot of them were well capable of playing at a, a decent level and played through. But like, the memories of Phil Mooney and, you know, trying to get us to, to matches and, and 27 of us hanging out in the back of a, a, a you know, a Ford, a Ford Cortina estate or whatever the case may be, heading off to play Black Rock or Wanderers or whatever. I mean, just fabulous memories. And, you know, I only see it now because it's kind of 360 for me. And it's very funny you kind of bring it up because, you know, I have to say, you know, there was a, a few years I wasn't around the club and um, mainly just life, you know, the, the kids were younger or whatever. But thankfully now, um, uh, my son, Garrett, uh, Garrett Jr., uh, named after my uh, illustrious and um, uh, famous brother, Garrett. Uh, but Garrett's now down playing in the club. And it's, it's absolutely fabulous because one, you're back down, two, you can have a bit of crack and give a, bit, a little bit back, albeit God only knows how talented the kids in our age group will be with, with Wadley here, who's coaching with me, like DJ Donners is down there, Massey's down there, DB, Ronan Willis, Connor Gormley, whenever he turns up, uh, you know, the oldies. And then the thing that I love about it is there's all the new, you know, uh, the kind of newer uh, grey stones, and that's like the likes of um, Burn, there's Will, there's Jeremy, Ty, Sean, and all the crew. And it's a really good eclectic mix. And like 75 kids, you know, that's what you want. Uh, smiles on their faces, you know, four or five teams. It's just been fabulous. And it's a real fantastic reintroduction to just what the club means to to me because it's in my blood and it's just part of everything I've done for all the time I've lived here. So, you know, like the other people I, I wouldn't mind ju just mentioning because, uh, you know, it'd be dear to my heart. Back in the day, you know, um, there's people like Joe O'Connor, God rest her soul, and I know Rory has just recently uh, been president of the club, but I remember Joe opening up the club shop, like bringing kids around, introducing kids, organizing teams, jerseys, everything. She was just relentless. And what a character and the effort, the time she put into the club. And she is, for me, you know, one of the foundations of that, that youth uh, section because it, from that, from that, it's, it just became something fabulous. And then like, there's people who, who who carried on. And again, the likes of Tim Harnett, Dave Woods. And, and look, I'm sure I'm not mentioning 
loads of people who put loads of effort in, but those people follow teams the whole way through, their sons or whatever. And again, it's a, you know, we were laughing there earlier on about doing the double again down the club, which is fabulous to see a junior team win. And I was there watching the Eden Derry game. It was just, just brilliant. Great to see them bring the first team in Monikers and then the lads just play a, play a bit of rugby and, and win and win comfortably. But you're looking at um, Mick Harnett on the sideline managing the team, you know. <laughs> It's, you know, another 360. He's, he's doing his dad's job, which is just brilliant. Um, and it's, it's, it's what our club is all about. It's, it's just, you know, ordinary people playing the best game in the world and having the best time, you know. And that's what it's always been about. And that's why the club is, is such a special place to be. Dead right, dead right. Um, you, you touched on it there, J5 double. Um, it's only been done twice in the history of the club. Um, yeah. Sorry, J4 double. Um, 1996 was the first one at the time it was ever done. You were a player yeah. on that team. Willie Byrne was captain. Um, do you have any memories That's of that right. campaign? I do. Yeah, I do. Because, again, like, that was a fairly... Well, look, you only have to look at the players that, was on, that were on that team. I mean, you know, Willie Byrne, Dwayne Kelly. Like, it's the same names again. Like, these are lads who... You know, Willie Byrne was like a piece of iron. You know, I mean, <laughs> Jesus, he was like, he was just, he was just, you know, unbreakable. The man was just uh, phenomenal in the front row. Then you had Duano, who just, you know, I mean, like, what can I say about the man? He was just a fabulous player all around. Like, I mean, his skill set, every he was just, he was just the, Top to toe player, you know, uh, fantastic um, player, fantastic effort. But then you had a few surprises in there. I think KB was in on that one That's right, um, yeah. as well. Um, he scored a fantastic DDP in <laughs> in one of the one of the games along the, around the line. So he got all the fame, but obviously I put him through. But um, I look. I mean, again, like you had Ross Doyle, you had lads that, you know, these were, and again, that's the epitome of what the club was and, and is becoming again. These are all lads who were first team potential. They were either players who had played on the first and were coming down to play or players who were just about to start their career on, on the first team. And I was only even reminiscing, and I don't know, I'm going off the subject <laughs> of winning double, but like, Higgs, you Conor McGuckey, and you Frank Turby, Neil O'Brien, KB Gussie. I mean, geez, there's another guy who heart and soul of the club, Ross Doyle, to name but a few. But um, all of these lads, you know, again, joined in the talent that played at, at junior level. And then there's loads of lads, the likes of Kevin O'Kelly and all these lads who quite easily could have played first rugby, but wanted to play junior rugby and that's how you know how great the atmosphere was down in the club at the time you know Dead right um we move forward uh, to 2001 you're j3 captain um yeah. and you'd have a successful league campaign there um you beat st mary's in the final up in wanderers 26 17 um what do you recall right. from that uh that season two things Great, great to win a trophy in, in in the chaps ground, which is always a good thing. But even better, well, the, I suppose the biggest memory, if if we were ever not going to win that match, we were going to win it um, after our um, comrades from St. Marauds turned up. They turned up in their um, base slacks and um, uh, navy blazers and... Uh, went on to tell us that, you know, they had booked out um, somewhere on Mason Street to celebrate um, their um, their win on the day. And again, like, that was a tough, tough game. That was really a tough game. And again, um, you know, uh, the lads up front uh, were, were, were supplying that day, and that was Simmons and, and uh, Cameron, and, and again, another man around the club now constantly down uh, physio to the club. But like you know, that was just a that was a that was a game that was won up front, uh, really tight, right to the finish, um, and uh, 
I remember more about what we didn't score that day, Jeremy. I think between myself and um, Colin Costello and the lads, I, I think we had they given us about three or four chances to get over the line. We didn't. Um, but in fairness, we made it in the end um, and uh, took on the league. And that was a celebration. I mean, I remember that celebration again. God rest his soul, Vincent Byrne, the heart and soul. And I've heard it, you know, I've been listening to the podcast and there's no, you know, it's it, it's not a mistake that you hear his name yeah. constantly being called out, you know, whether it be, you know, I'd say Pat, and and uh, you called it out, and and Cavey and some of the others. I mean, uh, he ran the club and and did so in in the most professional manner. Um, I had the honour of of, of uh, working down there for many years. I'll tell you a very good, uh, very funny story about our advocates now in a minute. But then, uh, you know, he, he you know ensured and. Um, put the effort in to make sure we had, you know, those nine, nine teams. And um, it really didn't matter whether you were playing twos, eights, it didn't matter. There was the name on the sheet, there was a tap on the shoulder, there was a phone call made, or probably more frequently, there was a car call at your door when you'd been out the night before and you were dragged out of bed with your gear or whatever else, or even if you didn't have gear, you were collected from somewhere else um, and there was gear in the back of the car to play your match. But he was the glue um, and uh, fantastic character, fantastic contributor and, you know, uh, wonderful stalwart of, of uh, junior rugby in the club. And again, at a time where, I mean, we were just hopping as a club. Our first were, you know, Division One, you know, like look at the road call. You had the Rigney brothers, you had Poppy, you had Spud, you had like I mean, Jesus, you could just go through it and and, and what talent. And then that was re reverberated right through the yeah. club and you know, winning trophies and uh, the place was just hopping. Great, great place to be around. But um uh, again, yeah, great celebrations, Jeremy. I do remember the celebrations because they certainly went to dawn the next day. Put it that way. <laughs> Tell me your Alakadu story. I'm gr I'm, well, look, I won't name any names, but I will in a minute. Um, Big more that One of the great things, about, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of the great things about working down the club was, you know, you got to know all the lads and. I mean, it was always fantastic on a Thursday um, evening because, uh, you know, you'd have a, a huge cohort come in for a few points, which is great. You'd be behind the bar and it's always great because um, the general consensus was, you know, if anybody calls, um, you know, I'm at a committee meeting. So there was a fair few lads who have never been on a committee in that club um, on a Thursday were, were at committee meetings if anybody called, particularly the the missus or um, anybody else looking for them. So, you know, that was the first thing. So you get the instructions as they came in and ordered their few points to be sitting down. But at that stage, you know, a, a lot of the lads behind the bar, we'd only, you know, we were late teens and just got our driver's license and all the rest. So the lads might have the other occasion. The night would go on a little bit late and uh, uh, the lads would, you know, invariably say, you know, any chance to drive me home, you know, as you were finishing up or whatever else, of course. Absolutely delighted to, to drive a brand new Mark home at that age <laughs> and, uh, with the lads in the back. But we used to have a, a great bit of crack with uh, a few of the lads. Um, uh, they, uh, will I name them or won't I name them? Well, look, they live around me, so they're not who they are, but um, we, used to, we used to drive them home, meet them at the front door, uh, and then we'd make sure we parked their cars either around the block or somewhere somewhere else. So you'd wait the next morning for the phone call to, to come in to say, yeah. did you uh, did you leave me home last night? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, where where would you have left the car? Oh, I don't parked it in the driveway there. So we'd finish the phone call in silence, and then there'd be a phone call back about ten minutes, say, yeah, little. 
where's the fucker? So we always had a bit of banter there with uh, some of the lads, but um, part of the crack down there, part of the crack down there. Oh, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. I'd love to know who it is, but it's better that we don't, maybe. Uh, well, there's a few of them. It wasn't just the one, to be fair. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, I'll stick on, I'll, I'll ask you about one more successful um, yeah. campaign, because if I talked to you about all of your uh, campaigns, we'd be here all night, we'd <laughs> fit it in. Um, Jay Force had a very difficult time winning the league. Believe it or not, they had five finals in a row. 2002, they lost under Trev Martin to Terry New York. 2003, they lost under Adolfo Sariano to Terenure. 2004, they lost under Paul Lennon to Terenure. 2005, they lost to RCSI under Willie Byrne. Um, and we've had Ben Finnegan and Niall Savage in that team who are still playing today. So I pl- Yeah, I played on that team as well. That was out in, in Seapoint, I think, was it? We lost so I understand the there's a um, yeah Niall Savage spreads a rumor that Ben Finnegan threw an intercept pass to lose the game. I don't know how accurate it is. Um, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. If it takes Ben Finnegan down, I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, but finally, they win it. 2006. You're the captain. Um, any memories of that long five year haul to get over the line? I do because, uh, as you said, like. Not all of them, I don't know. I certainly don't think I was on, on, on all the teams. Whether You were J3 whether it captain great. for a little bit. Or for first yeah, years. Th- threes, and I think we were play, playing a bit on the twos as well at that stage. Um, but um, oh, look, again, sometimes it's luck and, and, and sometimes it's, again, just just who, who came out. And if memory serves on, on that particular team, to some degree it was last hurrah for a lot of us. Um, and you know, I think we got together at the start of that season and said, Right, you know, let's go out with you know, one last big um show and, and, and get another medal. And again, you know, it just comes down to Jeremy if you, if you have a mix of players mm-hmm. that can get you over a line who've been there before, who've done it. I mean the difference it makes, and uh, and uh, like you know, even what do you have the do you have the the lineup there? I don't have the lineup, but I know that you had um, Willie Byrne. You would have had Mick Murray Willie, playing. It was, yeah, it was Willie Byrne was Dwayne Dwayne was playing. I think so. Um, yeah. Who else? Paul was playing. Um, was McNulty still around? No, McNulty had been gone at that stage. I think Frank Frank Turby was around. Um, Garrett Sinjor. Yeah. Um, like, do you know what I mean? That's that was your that was your basis to phenomenally talented, being there, done that pack, and then you throw in the likes of the duels, and you know, look, I mean, those lads when they arrived on the scene. I'm not sure they understood what pain was. I, I still don't think I did do actually, to be honest, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the two of them could have played, like, genuinely, and I want to play Dooler, Dooler, uh, uh, Roman's head, but, like, Roman could have been a centre. He could have been, you know, number eight, a flanker. Like, do you know what I mean? They they, they just had it. Um, and again, when you mix the youth with the old and you get a blend, it's done and dusted. And I see it on your teams. You know, I see it on, you know, the the latest winning team. And again, I'm looking at Gussie's son, Ben. Like, yeah. there you go. There's another legacy in a green and white jersey. Um, and, like, when, when you see, you know, players like that mix it in, and to some degree, some of them were only winning their first medal or whatever the case may be. Like you have it, you've got the legs, you've got the the old, you know. Um, well, I think a great example of that, like you talk about um, a mixture of uh, youth and experience. Tom Parker, he didn't make mm-hmm. his under twenties team. Yeah, he came down to play J fours. He won Player of the Year for yeah. that year. Yeah. He absolutely Tom- loved it. And then what happens next season? He gets picked for the under twenties. 
he went right up. He played J1 seniors. Ah, He's back still listen, playing now. Um, um, it just it's what Tom, junior rugby is all about. Played, it's an opportunity. And then, yeah, absolutely. And then look at Tom, right? Like you personified. I was only talking to him there um, down the club. Um, again, he's coaching. Um, I just met him. He, he was on um, after us on, on a Sunday morning. And like Tom played on the wing for us and loved it. I mean, he loved it. And he was a fantastic player, fantastic individual. He just bonded with the lads. The crack in the dresser and the slagging, he just loved it and couldn't get enough of it and came down. And he was phenomenal that year. I mean, you know, again, finishing off um, moves, scoring tries, he was just phenomenal. He was fit as a fiddle, speedster, absolutely superb. And, and I, came, I went down to watch the Eden Derry match and I'm there sitting, standing on the terrace going, is Tom playing flanker? <laughs> when did Tom become a flanker? And what a game he had, you know? Yeah. I mean, that epitomizes um, what the club is all about. Like, those lads just got an absolute and utter love of the game, the same as we had, and you just build that legacy on. And then look at all those teams that came after, those fantastic teams with Neil O'Brien, McGarity, yes. and, and, and the lads. Like, again, and... Robbie Linton's back playing, all these lads, and Ben is still playing, and, um, you know, uh, holding on for dear it's, life. It's, it's so addictive when you get a taste that of that at a young age, you just want more. Yeah, And it's as much the social scene, it's not the winning, um, and, and I don't mean that now to be disingenuous. I, I genuinely don't remember a whole lot of them, but I do remember all the lads and yeah. You know, to Alpha and you know Jeff Doyle in the later years again, another man who who uh, hung up his boots after he won in 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 Donnybrook, like fabulous stuff. And then such talent like Barry O'Sullivan, another guy, um, you know, who who was impressed with us and came down to play, hadn't played rugby, um, came came back to play, and then ended up playing five seasons in a row. You know, what I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't write it. And, and that's what the buzz is all about. It's the thing you miss when you finish is the yeah. lads in the dressing room and the banter. I mean, you just couldn't. I mean, if you can survive a Greystones dressing room <laughs> after a match, whether you win, lose or draw, you can survive anything in life because, um, you know, it, it's, it's up to four hours of just constant slagging. Um, straight after a game with a few beers and that is what the game is all about and that is you know what the club is all about and yeah, it's great. as much as I mean it's funny even when I do the rounds with coaching now because I meet a lot of fellas I played against in, in Belvo yeah, actually yeah. we only had a great set at the sea point I was talking to Frank Kelly and some of the other lads from Belvo that we would have known over the years and in fact I even got into a taxi recently and uh, you know, I was just talking on the phone, and the taxi driver stopped me, and uh, I, he went, "You're, you're Barry, you're Grayson, aren't you? Barry, I played against you for years." And, and it was Willie Burns' nemesis in <laughs> Mary's, his opposite um, uh, prop. Now his name escapes me, but like he was just reminiscent. Of it. And you meet all these lads again, and and again. We always went upstairs. We always had a pint um, and, and a bit of banter and a bit of swag. And that is what it's all about. Sure. Yeah, special time That's in your life. That's what the club is all about. Absolutely. Barry, you and I have more in common than just um, playing scrum yes, pass across we various do, junior teams. Um, we're both... Uh, fabulous, fabulous, talented scrum halves, <laughs> Jeremy. Very much so, very much so. But um, not only that, we're both older brothers to very successful younger brothers. Um, Correct, Jeremy. Yours being um, aforementioned, Garrett. Garrett Kyo. Tell me a little bit about him. He was he was Greystones' answer to Shane Williams is what I was going to say, but I think he actually predates that. So I think Wales' he, answer to Garrett Kyo was Shane, Shane Williams. I, I, yeah, I think so. I don't think Shane Williams did a, did a many... Um, any honours. Um, Agar was just phenomenal. And again, I mean, in fairness to him, you know, he put a huge amount in. And uh, like I remember back in the day, Kieran Fitzgerald, when Kieran was um, managing the first, you know, um, he would have been a huge, huge fan of Gar. And uh, like, you know, 
he would have walked out on the pitch, I'm sure, and and many a, a winger up against yeah. them would have um, fancied their chances. By the end of the game, I'd say they regret even um, having to come up against him. He was phenomenal in tackle for the size of him, um, absolutely fearless. And again, I mean, you know, pleasure going down to watch him. You know, as an older brother, as you can, um, I'm sure you can um, understand just... Uh, I mean, he played again. He played with, uh, you know, great first teams down there, you know, um, and uh, he just uh, played his size every time. Um, and I do remember, and the name escapes me, a Kiwi flanker who played for Ireland. He was a band of henchman. Andy Ward. Um, Andy Ward. Now, Andy was a tough man. And uh, I, I do remember a day down in Dr. Hickey when... Um, he uh, broke from a line out and Garrett absolutely ploughed him. And I mean ploughed him into the ground. And, you know, I heard that, you know, that hollow sound that comes from someone who's <laughs> just been tackled very hard. But um, I remember hit, him hitting the ground and uh, uh, Garrett got up, turned, uh, looked up, uh, looked up at me with a big smile on his face. But um, look, he was just, he was a pocket rocket, speed, Phenomenal talent, and in fairness to him, he put a huge amount into it. I want to ask you a little bit about captaincy. When I was doing my, my prep for this, I asked um, various players you would have um, played with over the years. They yes. all said the same thing. Unprompted was um, that you're a great captain, but that your speeches before matches were always on the money. Um, that's a skill. Like, was it something that you were cognizant of? Did you practice? Did you understand that you had an impact over uh, your, your teammates when you spoke? Um, uh, love motivating lads. And, and you know yourself, Jeremy, there's, there's, you know, aside from yourself, there's always 14 to 20 different characters in dressing room um, and different lads need different things. Um, and, you know, Probably more old style than than is now. There, there certainly wasn't any Molly Codlin back then. But like, just to have lads up and at it, going out and shared purpose and all those things. Look, all simple things and their words. But um, you know, there was an awful lot of respect um in a dressing room between each of the lads, and that was always neutral. And um, you left everything out on the pitch, win, lose, or draw, and you enjoyed your pint afterwards. So, I mean, look. Again, look, I, look, I enjoy captaining teams. I enjoy playing with the lads, and it was always an honour. So, you know, mutual respect was always the key piece. But ultimately, you know, probably a little bit louder. Um, I'm certainly much smaller than you, Jeremy. So, you know, the, the, those loud, annoying scrum halves that um, tend to point the lads in, in certain directions certainly probably was one of my key facets over the years. Napoleon complex, dead right. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 something, something like that. I'm, sorry, I'm sure now DJ and the lads will tell you, tell you many stories now about me annoying them all right. Sure. Um, I want to ask you about becoming director of junior rugby. Um, yeah. I looked it up, it was in 2000, that's 22 years ago. Um, yeah. You were a young enough man to be getting... Um, what yeah, I was about eight. I was about eight at the time. Well, <laughs> um, um, yeah, talk me through that. Change. I mean, what was like yeah, you'd be on the administrative side? Well, look, I, I referred to a few people earlier on, like and the likes of Joe Connor and Rory and the guys, you know, who were putting huge effort in at the time. And I was playing, and it was a bit like a change of the guard, and, and it was a change of the guard after, to be fair. Another absolute legend of the club, like Joe Devine, like what a man. I mean, like there isn't a man in any club that has a bad word to say about our Joe, like just a phenomenal character. Again, you, Jeffrey, put in and Joe had put in years and years on the executive um, for, for for the juniors. And um, it was just, again, a bit of timing. And I said, look, I haven't time uh, you know to put it at, the, at that stage as down club was working was single and all those type of things and you know I felt you know I want to put a bit, a bit in I, I, I'm getting so much out of it uh, and it was also really at that time you know there was so many junior players and whatever and it was a bit of 
look, you know, we need the basics here. We need the medical kit. We need our kits. We need or whatever, you know, let's put the word in or, or at least let's get the veto to, to, you know, get the money to, you know, get a bit of sponsorship together or whatever the case may be. So, look, that was what it was all about. And to make sure there was a, a louder voice um, for the juniors at that stage. Was it hard picking um, eight teams at a weekend? I spoke to Trev Martin it before. Was and absolutely we, we... great crack, Jeremy. <laughs> I have to say, we had absolute great crack sitting down with captains and, um, you know, invariably they would name their 15. We totally disagree and <laughs> rename the team and you know make the phone calls that look there's always hard decisions that you'd make but they were more look isn't it great making decisions to select a team when they're going into a semi-final or a final that's a yeah that's yeah, a joyous yeah, yeah, yeah. um time but week in week out look listen like i mean we were only laughing there uh, the other day i think myself katie and uh, so we got we were there watching a match and we're talking about players who played um, on every team over a weekend and might not have been in the country. Um, so, like, I mean, we we just made it work. And, and look, again, it was that stage with the lads. Like, there was lads playing on a Friday night, a Saturday, and, and, and running and talking out on a the Sunday. There was other lads, you know, running out with a question mark on their jersey. It was just pandemonium. But, I mean, the fun, there was as much fun reading the selection board and um, you know, on, on a Tuesday or a, a Friday night to find out where you were or, or you know what they did. Like there was great crack in sending certain lads out to Clondalkin on a Sunday just to <laughs> you know make sure they got an eye for training the next week. Um, versus um, lads who were playing the home game um, on a Saturday to make sure they were in the club for a few points to watch the first afterwards. So, um, you alluded to your age there, Barry. In my estimation. You're probably mid, mid, but we'll go, we'll go, but conservatively say mid 40s, right? What Conservative. Have here. Yes. That's hard to see here. Um, that's you, I think. That's, that's me. Eric Archer. That's right. The so famous Eric Archer. I almost put you at least 110. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, I'm dead. Yeah. I must be. There's another Alakadu, legend in his time. God, what a man. What a um, man. How did you end up playing a match with Eric Archer? Oh, jeez. I, I can't even remember that. Was that a fair blocks game? Was it? Looks like it's down in Rat Drum, Drumstones Cup or something. Oh, like Drumstones. That. Yeah, but there's another one. Like, I mean, look at all of those. We used to play fair blocks around Christmas time. We did the Drumstones Cup. I mean, like, you'd have lads come out of the woodwork coming down <laughs> to, to play games like that. that I'd say that was a that was a testimonial for Eric. Uh, yeah, yeah, it must I have hope been. it was a testimonial <laughs> for Eric. Um, I want to talk to you a bit about touring. Um, you yeah. said there when you came in to the director of rugby role, that was actually one of the areas you're focusing on, something that you wanted to expand. Yeah. Well, look, yeah, Tell me a little yeah, bit about it. Yeah, look again. I mean, look, our firsts were going on on trips and uh, and all the rest and. To be fair, um, you know, we always had our annual trip and our annual trip up to there was, um, you know, we'd um, go drinking the night before, wait for the bus to arrive down the club and we'd all come out in the sunset, throw a, throw a bag into, into the, the boot of the bus and off we'd go. We'd stop in Mullingar. We always played the lads in Mullingar and I, I think Joe Devine had the connection there. And then we'd always play or, or stay in the skeff up in, in uh, Galway. And, you know, we'd always have great crack and we might play a friendly up there and, and come down. And they were always really good trips, great crack. Um, and we'd done it over the years, but it was a group of players who'd been together and, and kind of done that trip a number of times. And, you know, one of the things, you know, we spoke about as a group was, you know, let's do something different. Let's go you know, let's go on a tour. And uh, the the famous, infamous um, tour um, we first went on was Santander. Uh, we entered the beach rugby tournament in Santander. Um, a lot of our lot uh, had never seen the sun in, in all their lives. So there was uh, plenty of um, white um, bodies with no um, sun cream or indeed 
Ricky Wogan, who went on that trip and used After Sun for a week before he realised it, it wasn't actually um, uh, sunscreen. Um, uh, drummer with his his famous um, Panama hat. Um, but it was just a phenomenal journey, right from start to finish, from organising it, the banter organising it up in the clubhouse, putting together the club brochure, you know, uh, ordering all the gear. Uh, still have my Santander jersey somewhere upstairs. And um, all of us had, you know, letters on the backs, the square in Santander, some of the pictures that were taken. And the likes of um, uh, Dwayne's dad, uh, George Sr., I mean, you know, all the effort in, in, in putting together from top to toe, whether it be gear, the logistics, the you know, getting the lads to go uh, and some of the pictures, um, you know, and look, the characters on that one, uh, Gareth Stingmore, Nuji was on that one, uh, Lloyd and, and his brother, the Murphys. I mean, you know, you couldn't beat it. It was a phenomenal tour. And that started the book because then we went to Valencia twice, you know, and, and, and they go far afield now, which is fantastic. Because that, again, you know, is what it's all about. Dead right. Um, we're at the homeward stretch now, Barry. So, yes, I'm gonna ask you the hard questions, Jeremy. The hard ones. <laughs> um, what's your favorite Greystones rugby club memory? There's been so many. Um, I say, look, one trophy's been in great dressing rooms. Um, oh, look, there's probably loads from just you, you know being with the lads, whatever, but but. You know, one one of the ones that's really vivid in my in my mind, and I, I think I've mentioned it to you before. Like I can remember, I remember getting on a train to go down to Cork Con. I think there was seven, eight hundred Greystones people on that uh, special schedule train to go down, and just the whole day was just great crack from start to finish. And again, you're going down to watch. As was you don't appreciate, yeah. you know things when you're you're doing it or you're in it it's only when you you're kind of um thinking back about you know what it was all about and it was just fabulous and it was a, a, that's a great memory i have standing on terrace you know uh watching the brother play uh, on the first always a stalwart memory it didn't matter you know who 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 he was up against it was great to 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 see him do his thing and then look I mean, just to share, um, you know, uh, a win with, you know, a lot of the lads I mentioned uh, are just, there's, there's no one, Jeremy, there's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. probably a hundred. And uh, again, that's what the club's given to me. Yeah. And yeah. God forbid, man. yeah, God forbid it continues on. And as I say, the next, next generation keep it going because that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Um, who's the best? Player you played with, very sounds rugby club. God, they'll kill me. Um, <laughs> if I one, ah, uh, look, I think, look, hands down for me because I've warriored with him over the years and um, just an absolute gentleman and um, pure strength personified everything at his pomp. I think Dwayne Kelly was just all round top top class absolute gentleman still a great friend um probably the drunkest man in Greystones um <laughs> last Saturday night um, after the rock game um great to see him out again with his brother George uh, another great man um and Damo as well all the lads were out, uh, watching the game but Dueno was just top top class I mean as a talent as you know uh, just his skill Everything and again, there's Jeremy. There's another example of a guy who could easily have spent a long mm-hmm. time um, on on a senior squad, um, but you know himself through his own choice, you know was was more to play with the lads. Albeit he did play um, at the top level as well, but definitely hands down, um, Dwayne O'Kelly, who is probably the older model of that younger. Uh, Lyle Hazelton lad who who seems to be still running around the pitch these days. A nice way to end it, Barry. Um, 
for very good reason, um, a lot of people's memories of the club kind of immediately jump maybe to the top names, you know, we, uh, guys who played for Ireland or the Lions. Um, but a big motivator for me in this was to shine a light on the hard work that goes into the junior section. Um, and there's very few people over the years that put as much effort on and off the pitch into the junior section as you did. Thanks for talking to us today. And we'll catch you again. Yeah, soon. and thanks. And just before I go, it's, and it is important to recognise some of the lads because Paul Lennon's still managing down there, you know, part of the management setup. Look at the effort he puts in week in, week out. And look, at a special call out to Savo. You know, what a guy, you know, both from playing, effort he puts in on a daily basis, and now, you know, from an executive point of view. So look, to all of them, you know, keep it going because um, it does matter. Dead right. Hat, hat off to you, Barry. Thanks so much. Oh, Jared. Thanks for the time. Look after yourself. See ya. Bye bye.